Welcome to the captivating land of El Salvador, a hidden gem in Central America. With pristine Pacific coastlines, dramatic volcanoes, and rich culture, this compact nation offers a tapestry of experiences. Join me as we stroll through San Salvador's colonial streets, watch surfers at El Tunco Beach, and embark on the ultimate adventure, the Santa Ana Volcano Hike. But the surprises doesn't end there. From the rainbow slide at Picnic Steakhouse to the bicycle zipline at Cafe Albania, El Salvador invites you to explore its wonders. Get ready for a journey that transcends the ordinary and opens the door to the extraordinary experiences. Our first stop took us on a vibrant adventure just a stone throw away from San Salvador. The rainbow slide, a beacon of color and excitement awaits you at Picnic Steakhouse. This renowned slide has carved its place as one of the top attractions in San Salvador. Nestled 20 minutes from the bustling city, Picnic Steakhouse is not just any restaurant. It's a haven of steaks, though I can't vouch for that since I never ate there. But let's talk about the real magic. The weather up there is perfect, creating an ideal setting for the thrill that awaits. Access to this magical spot is free, but you've got to indulge in the restaurant's offering to unlock the full experience. Once you've savored the flavors, a mere $5 ticket grants you access to the colorful giant rainbow slide. My turn for God deal with that slide thing, you know? Everybody don't do it already, so my turn, you know. That wasn't too bad. It was good. My heart was racing. Right when he pushed, I thought I was going to fly off of it. But nah, it wasn't so bad. If you could stay, stay straight, it's not so bad. But me, I was spinning. <laughs> so it made it even more like crazy. But it was worth it. I'll do it again. This isn't just a slide. It's a journey into a world of joy and exhilaration. We spent the afternoon exploring San Salvador's historical center, a fascinating glimpse into the past. Museums, churches, and murals create a journey through El Salvador's history. Amid restoration work, the city's charm is complemented by bargain shops, tempting food stalls, and curious visitors. What makes it even more special is the warm welcome from the locals. San Salvador feels like a living museum urging you to uncover its story with every step. It's a blend of the past and present. Perfect for history enthusiasts, bargain seekers, and food lovers alike. This city welcomes all explorers with open arms. It's a new day and we're at Los Choros Waterfalls. Just a 20 minute drive from San Salvador lies Los Churros Recreation Center. Initially, I thought it was a waterfall, but I was wrong, and it's so much more. Locals and visitors alike adore this natural escape. It's like nature's own paradise, waiting to be explored and enjoyed by everyone. This place is beautiful. I expected a little bit more, but it's a beautiful place though. Nice, lush, everything. Beyond being a recreational center, it transforms into a water park. It's a natural spring, modified to enhance the swimming experience while preserving its authenticity. Immerse yourself in the cool embrace of the natural spring, stand beneath the waterfalls, or perch on the steps and let the little minnows playfully tickle your toes. Working late on poison the fish. <laughs> <laughs> this place is a sanctuary where nature and recreation intertwine. On scorching Salvadorian days, it becomes the ultimate retreat to beat the heat. So, decided to take us to this restaurant and he said that it was very good. Uh, outside is this beautiful garden. I'm exploring while I'm waiting for my food. But man, it is beautiful over here. Entering Nubes Cafe translates to Among the Clouds, a fitting name for the dreamlike ambience. 
This gem isn't just a delicious eatery, it's also a coffee farm. Flowers cascading from a ceiling woven with leaves and branches creates an enchanting dining experience. Entrenube offers more than delightful meals. It's an affordable escape into a magical garden, perfect for photos. This place is a true gem where delicious food meets affordability. Make sure to try their delicious pupusas, adding an extra layer of flavor to your experience. Get ready for an extraordinary adventure at Café Albania. This place isn't your typical adventure park. It's a collection of thrilling experiences that spoke to us in a way that others didn't. Our goal at Café Albania is to conquer the bicycle zipline, a $10 ticket to redefine what excitement truly means. Here, you're not confined to a single adrenaline pumping choice. You can opt for a leisurely bike ride suspended high above the ground soaking in the views at your own pace, or if you're feeling bold, amp up the thrill and surf the zip line with a bit more speed. Our choice, the bicycle route. But the excitement doesn't end there. Cafe Albania unfolds a world of hard pounding bungee jumping experiences, slides, intricate mazes, and more surprises. Did I mention it's also a restaurant? Due to our late arrival, we could only dive into the main event the bicycle zipline. The experience was a rush, leaving us wanting for so much more. My shit was rocking back and forth like crazy, man. <laughs> I'm gonna fall off this bitch. Nah, we got this. Cafe Albania offers a thrilling experience catering to the daring at heart while keeping you on the edge of your seat. It's unbelievable. That's the only word I could use to to like describe it. Well, first of all, what, looking at it from a distance, you see the wires shaking, so you're like, this isn't happening. But once you get out there, it's, it's dope. And just the fact that you're above everything and then taking in the entire environment, it's something that's gonna leave a lasting memory for a while. I'm not one for these crazy things, but I got dragged into it. I got the outer lane, and the outer lane was shaking like crazy, man. It was just bouncing. Actually, I can't speak about the views because my head was just straight. I didn't want to look down. I didn't want to look left. I didn't want to look right. But we did it. Embarking on the Santa Ana volcano hike was the highlight of our journey. The anticipation built during the scenic two hour drive from San Salvador, and by 9 a.m., we found ourselves at the base of this majestic natural wonder. Right now, we're at the start of the Santa Ana volcano hike. Um, we need about 10 people to start the hike, and we are short that right now, so we're just waiting on a few more people to get here, and then we'll be on the way. The arrival at the parking area marked the beginning of our adventure, surrounded by fellow explorers and guides preparing for the hike. Each group was assigned a guide who briefed us about the cost and the route, a brief conducted entirely in Spanish. So because of the large group, we only had to pay $3.50 per person. The 50 cents is because we have to cross on somebody else's land and that's their tax that we gotta pay them. The journey from the parking area to the ticket counter led us continuously uphill through the enchanting forest. Upon reaching the ticket counter, we secured our tickets. In this area, opposite the ticket counter, there are restrooms for use. This is the only option for using the restroom for the entire hike, so I suggest using it. We got to our first little stop, which is where we pay the government six more dollars. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the government likes to collect money. And this is where the hike kind of officially begins. You know, people over there are getting snacks and steaks and making a number four or a number two or a number one before we start off on this hike. After getting our tickets, we walk through peaceful forest trails, a welcome break from the steep climb. The rustling leaves and gentle breeze gave a comforting feel reminding us of nature's embrace. The lush vegetation gradually gave way to a thinner landscape. With every step upwards, the air lightened and the familiar dirt path transformed into rocky routes. Walking along the volcano's side, a vast open view unfolded to our left, showcasing breathtaking scenery. As we climb higher, nearing the volcano crater, a faint scent of sulfur occasionally lingered in the air. This part of the hike brought a noticeable slowdown so much so that we found ourselves trailing behind the group. Our pace eased, navigating the increasing challenges of the trail, and importantly, 
accommodating our young companion, a five-year-old. Quick little viewpoint while we take a break. Hopefully we're less than halfway there. A piece of advice. Tackling this challenging hike with a five-year-old might not be the best idea. Now, if someone claims the Santa Ana volcano hike is a breeze, I disagree. It's mainly due to this section from the viewpoint to the summit. From here, the path takes a steep uphill turn full of twists and turns, navigating rocks and boulders. This shit was over an hour. Don't fail me now, we're almost there. You can see the ice cream guy. Once you can see the ice cream guy, I mean you're almost there. <sighs> this was challenging. The real treat awaits at the Santa Ana Volcano Summit, the Emerald Crater Lake. While swimming is a no-go due to its acidic nature, the views are nothing short of magnificent. This is what we came all the way up here for. It was a longer hike than I expected, and then the end of it was a little challenging, but it was worth every second of it, because this view, this is, this is unmatched. This, I can't believe this. The spectacle isn't limited to the crater lake. From the summit, every direction unveils stunning landscapes. The Izalco Volcano and Cotopique Lake contribute to the 360-degree panorama of breathtaking scenery. You're granted about a half an hour to soak it all in, but honestly, we couldn't tear ourselves away and stayed longer. This is an umbrella, and that's the ice cream guy back there who sells it. So whenever you see that guy, you know that you're almost at the top. <laughs> this tastes like a popsicle, but well needed and deserved when you make it to the top. And my ass was dying toward the end, but I made it. We strolled around the summit immersing ourselves in the sights and sounds of the surrounding vistas. The payoff is not just in reaching the top, but in embracing the awe-inspiring views that make the Santa Ana Volcano ascent an unforgettable journey. Eventually, we began our descent towards the trailhead. It was treasurous. It started off great, then the moment she got on my back, I got exhausted. But it wasn't too bad. It was worth it. Sal got us on this other expedition here. Sal, where are we going? We're going to go to Peñón de Comasagua. Okay, and how difficult is it to get there? Uh, difficult. It's like a 5 of 10. 5 of 10? Yeah. You know that we hiked a volcano yesterday, right? Yeah, yesterday was a long day. Okay. My guide Sal suggested a stop that wasn't initially on my list. Here the entrance is free, but you must pay a $1.50 parking fee and no guide is required for the climb. Embarking on this adventure unfolds a nature-filled journey up this monumental rock, revealing the Salvadorian coastline and the surrounding hills and mountains. The 1.5 km climb to the summit boasts a moderate level of difficulty, 3 out of 10, due to steps built into the rock. At the top, there's no protective barrier making this point an extreme adventure. Despite the challenge, the effort pays off. The real treasure lies not just in conquering the climb, but in embracing the stunning views that make Peñón de Camasagua a memorable adventure. All this fucking hiking in this shit. Gotta get tired. But we made it to the top. Nate beat me for the first time. Nate got up. Got up here way before me. But oh, man, it's like a nice panoramic view of nothing. You like the view from up here? Tell me what do you see? I see birds, butterflies, frogs, and everything. The last adventure of the day, we're gonna go see this waterfall. What's the name of the waterfall? Tamanique Waterfall. Our guide Sal truly put our physical fitness to the test, leading us to the breathtaking Tamanique waterfalls. This adventure demands some effort, so good footwear is a must. The entrance cost was $7 per adult and a mere 25 cents for our five-year-old adventurer, including a guide to accompany us. While there are four waterfalls, we opted for the fourth due to time constraint. Brace yourself. It's the most challenging of them all, involving a steep downhill and a steep climb on the return. Navigating big rocks and stones, we reached the reveal of the Tamanique waterfall, 
the tallest among the four, cascading into a natural pool. Come on, Avi! You could do it, Mama! Yes, Davi, you make it! Just take a jump in the water and watch out the crossing. I'm gonna like have no fire that quickly. <laughs> this felt more like an hour. Very bad roads to get to this waterfall, man. And my knee's still hurting from the volcano yesterday. But we're here, and we're gonna enjoy it. The water is refreshing inviting you for a swim, or at least to feel the cool droplets on your face. We cherish the sense of freshness, spending quiet moments admiring the beauty of the place. I feel so beautiful. All right, a little one. That's our five-year-old misery. There's been a little headache on the trip. But that's the view, and this is where we end the day. Last day in El Salvador and we're here at the Kiosco San Francisco restaurant that's overlooking the beautiful stunning lake. Just an hour drive from San Salvador lies Kiosco San Francisco. More than a restaurant, it's a haven for an afternoon drink or coffee with friends or family. Here you can indulge in the Salvadoran traditional foods all while basking in the panoramic views of Lake Ilopongo and the delightful climate. While I can't vouch for the full menu, I can say their fries left a good impression. It's not just about the food, it's an experience, a moment to savor simple joys of good company, scenic views, and a memorable afternoon. Last stop of the trip, Playa El Tunco. This is where a lot of the surfers come and get their surf on. Visiting the beach is a must, especially when it's close to where you're staying. El Tunco, a beach town synonymous with surfing, relaxation, and pure chill vibes. In recent years, this once tiny beach town has transformed into El Salvador's most visited destination. Not too long ago, El Tunco was a local hangout. However, the town's reputation skyrocketed internationally after hosting various surfing tournaments. Interestingly, the town gets its name from a distinctive rock formation on the beach. Some says it resembles a pig with its leg up, a testament to people's vivid imagination, but I don't see it. For those seeking affordability, a laid-back atmosphere, and good vibes, El Tunco is the perfect retreat. This is our guide and driver, Sal. If you come to El Salvador, you better call Sal. Thank you so much, eh? it will be a pleasure to work for you. If you're interested in learning more about Central America and exploring volcanoes, I recommend watching my next video featuring a drive to Volcano Acatenango in Guatemala.